Hi. Gay is not sin, and Jesus isn't asking the gay person to change and be straight. That's right. I bet you have no idea where I am. You know, I've seen this on TV an awful lot, but now I'm here. And uh, all kinds of stories about this place. Mostly they still really don't know what is actually the truth about it. A lot of guesses. But anyway, you know, Jesus is going to be returning soon and we're going to get answers to all these types of megalith things that we see around the world that uh, seem to defy imagination. This is supposed to then start being built over 5,000 years ago, which seems to defy a lot of stuff that we're taught about the Bible because uh, we didn't think this kind of stuff was could be done back in those days but anyway it's some of the mysteries of the world that that uh, will let us know the glory of God as to what was back in those days so we're getting to know a lot more because Jesus is soon going to be returning and we got to figure out our own lives uh, because all our life if we don't know Jesus there's always people and things around you that that try to come into your life to tell you about Jesus there's still about 2.8 billion people that have no clue about who Jesus is because uh, their language isn't a written language and they can't read a pretty good percent of the world can't even read, so having a written language, the Bible in their language, doesn't do much good. But even today, there's ministries out there producing audio Bibles to reach these people that don't have any written language or can read anything, and, and there's no Bible in their language anyway. So when we hear our preachers say that the gospels being preached in all the world just because satellite can make television waves hit every part of the earth doesn't mean people are hearing about Jesus so there's still a lot of work to be done and uh, it's uh, a little while yet to go I think that we have like uh, in the Old Testament Hosea 6 2 it says there's two days and then in the third day he'll bring us up to reign with him it, there are two days and there'll be a reviving and I think this started probably when Jesus ascended back to heaven after he died on the cross and rose from the dead so if that's the case then that brings us the 2,000 years is up in 2027 or 2029 uh, because people believe that Jesus was either born in 4 BC or 6 BC. And so we're, uh, at any rate, we're getting really close uh, to when things happen. And some of the things that's going to be really happening that we'll know that we're close is if a peace treaty is signed in the Middle East. Because Antichrist is supposed to sign a treaty to confirm peace with uh, Israel's enemies and to return the covenant back to working. And at that time, the third temple can be built. Now we already know today that all the ingredients for the third temple are already prepared for. Uh, Levites are being trained. The furniture has already been uh, made and ready to be put into the new temple. Blueprints are done. They're just waiting for this peace agreement. Uh, in fact, Israel, at any time they want, they can declare that alongside the Dome of the Rock Mosque, they could build the third temple because they think that's where the original one was anyway. But the most important thing for today is get to know Jesus. Find out who he is. He so loved you. God so loved you. He sent his only begotten son to pay the price for your sins. 
because nobody can earn salvation. And there wasn't any, the Old Testament law taught us that we were sinners. So we know we're sinners. Uh, and if you think you can obey the Old Testament law, give it a try. It's, you'll find out that it's impossible. And so we do need a Savior to, that paid the price for our sins. And that's what Jesus did when he died on the cross. He paid the price for your sins so that you don't have to. And uh, so you should accept Jesus now and, and turn to him and just pray this prayer right now. Say, God, I believe you sent Jesus to die on the cross to pay for my sins because you first loved us while we were yet a sinner. Jesus, forgive me of my sins and come into my life. A prayer like that, God will then impute into you the righteousness of Jesus Christ. So from now on, when God looks at you, he sees the right righteousness of Jesus, not your sin. We're sinners till we die. So when we sin or we know we sin, we just simply ask forgiveness. And uh, the righteousness of God is sufficient. Uh, so now you can start to get to know Jesus by reading the Bible and start with the book of John that's the easiest way to get started you could see all the wonderful promises and the love of God and his purpose and read the whole Bible and get to know Jesus now Jesus also offered us uh, baptism in the Holy Spirit because when you accept Jesus you're born again and you have the spirit of Jesus basically actually the Holy Spirit is baptizing you in Jesus so you feel the comfort of Jesus but there's another baptism that Jesus baptizes you with and that's with the Holy Spirit and when you're baptized with that you have the initial evidence of speaking a language you didn't learn and this language allows the Holy Spirit to pray through you using your vocal cords in a language you don't know and uh, because when we pray with our understanding well, we could pray some pretty good prayers but it's mostly give me give me help me do this help me do that and so forth but when you pray in the Spirit using your heavenly language uh, the Holy Spirit knows what to pray for and helps you pray for what would be God's will and Jesus told us that you haven't asked in Jesus name if you ask in Jesus name he will do it you'll be surprised how many prayers are answered when you ask Jesus in his name or ask God in Jesus name to uh, get something done for you or give you something there's so many miracles that can happen that are unexplainable. I never thought I'd be able to get here. I've worried so much about finding my way here and what train or what bus or whatever to take. London seems so complicated to me, but here I am. And it's actually pretty easy. A piece of cake, actually. Shouldn't have had anything to worry about. And later on, we're going to go to Bath City. And I guess the Roman baths are there, and they're going to we're going to be there for two or three hours and then uh, head on back to London. But today so far has been the coldest day. Actually, it's pretty chilly now. The wind's blowing and and it's uh, really need a jacket for today. They said it could rain, but then uh, I think tomorrow's going to be better again. So it's, so far, it's pretty good. It's been sunny most of the time that I've been here. And it looks like it's going to be sort of the same after today. But it's uh, probably an hour and a half drive here from London in a pretty nice, comfortable bus. Uh, they call the freeways here motor, motorways. Motorways. Motorways, yeah. And, you know, if you're trying to look for an elevator, you probably won't find one because they're called lifts. They say you take the lift down to minus one. They don't say down to basement level one or something. But it's a 
few things are different and uh, so far this trip is going pretty good tomorrow I'm gonna maybe take the river cruise uh, on the Th Thames River but we're living in the last days and there's people need to be thinking about getting ready so that you can expect things not to be too happy. There's going to be a war in the Middle East. It's really, there's a lot of things that people will preach all kinds of ways of when and what order things will be, but it's just not really that clear. Even though some people have some pretty good ideas, there's there's a war that's called Gog and Magog War, where the whole Middle East basically wants to attack Israel. Well, Antichrist needs Israel, so he's going to be strong. Nobody can uh, do war against him. And so uh, he's going to protect Israel. And it says that five-sixths of the uh, sort of Arab-type ar army, probably the Muslim army that wants to wipe Israel off the map, will be destroyed. Apparently Russia will be leading them. And Antichrist is strong enough to stop them dead in their tracks. And there's going to be about six months where people will be professionally hired to bury the dead. And uh, then Israel is going to take seven years to burn those weapons of that war. So that, when we read about the tribulation, which is a seven-year period, it doesn't seem to indicate anywhere in it that Israel is burning weapons for that whole time and once the tribulation's over we're going to heaven and reigning with Jesus and those that are alive are going to start to live still in the flesh for the thousand years and it doesn't really tell us that after the tribulation Israel's going to be burning the weapons so we got uh, some different things to think about here uh, to timing frame of what's going to be happening uh, so that war could start completely seven years before the tribulation so we, that means we got at least seven years before the tribulation but once the peace treaty is signed of course if that war happened then there wouldn't be many Muslims left in any kind of power that they would probably love to sign a peace deal uh, but th some of these things we just don't know about because there's two wars some people want to put the war of Magog and Gog and Magog as the war of Armageddon but the war of Gog and Magog is led by Russia leader pro most likely and the Armageddon is led by Antichrist and war of Armageddon, they're going to pretty much the world is going to try to attack Israel because they think Israel's not obeying the world laws. And in that process of fighting, where they almost were able to take Jerusalem, I think about half the city they're able to take, then all of a sudden Jesus is starting to come down. So Antichrist turns everybody's attention to Jesus and say, shoot him down course you know that doesn't work and Jesus uh, kills them all and uh, had the birds come in and feast on their bodies and then he'll touch his foot down on the Mount of Olives will be with Jesus uh, but Jesus will do all that fighting and then will reign with Jesus for a thousand years and so it's really an interesting thing coming up a lot of things happening a lot of prophecies already been answered there's still a lot to go there's going to be two witnesses here and I really think that the church has been in disobedience to God for almost 2,000 years just like the nation of Israel every single king you read about when you read in the Old Testament has did not do what was right in the sight of God and so at times God would raise up and basically punish Israel. One time he took all of Israel into captivity for 70 years. Well, now we have the church age and 
often we read in the church age that Christians have not been doing what's right in the sight of God because we're told to love our neighbor as ourselves, but instead we hate our neighbor. And today that's prevalent in, uh, and it has been for about 700 years, is if you're gay, then Christians are supposed to hate you basically and say you're going to hell. And so they're not loving their neighbor because there's 750 million gays in the world. And the Bible doesn't condemn gays. One of the main ingredients that they say gay is sin is using the word sodomite, which is found seven times in the Bible. And, and there's like 14 verses that are used. And the seven times it actually used the word sodomite, which is actually a male temple prostitute. And gays are not male temple prostitutes. They're just like straights. They grow up, they want to meet somebody and marry them. Now, and for getting close to a decade, gays can get married legally in the United States. That's amazing to me, but there's still one more step to go, and that's the church to accept gays, to break away from their hating their neighbors. And uh, that's going to take a shaking. I think it's going to take 1260 days uh, for them to be shaken. Antichrist has 1290 days. I believe that starts from the end of the tree of working forward. So he has 30 days that crosses over the uh, two witnesses ministry. And there is uh, Bible numbers that indicate there's a time such as a time to kill. And it kind of matches up that because it's going to take 30 days for Antichrist to kill the two witnesses. And everybody's going to be happy because uh, they were wrecking havoc on, not only on the world system, but the churches, you know, because they've been being chastised for their sin, basically. Plagues comes onto them as well so that they will repent of their sins against gays and other people if that usually so much, many times we look at the history of the United States we find that a bulk of people that s state that they're close to God and obey God they're usually always behind the attacks on minorities and and uh, ways not to have rights for people and they're, they're always at the bottom of fighting against people and today they're they're saying that the nation is bad because they are given rights to gays, so that's why God is going to punish gays. And, and so, they're not realizing that the Bible tells why God punishes a nation. And he says, when my people disobey me, then I'll punish their na nation. And there's several places the Bible explains. So a Christian, if you think God is punishing the nation because of its turning sexually immoral or going to more immoral laws, uh, you got to remember the Bible says God punishes nations because of church sin, not because of unbelieving sin, unbelievers. So when you're seeing things that you don't like happening in the world, Remember, Christians got to repent. Even though a couple of times they attempted this, they always end up going out and doing worse than when they first. They say, "They say we, God forgive us. We're going to turn from our wicked ways, and you can heal our land." Well, they make a good prayer, but they go right out and hate their neighbor all the more, thinking they're doing God's will to punish the the wicked that they think are evil in the world. But again, let, let's uh, get down to the, what is needed. If you don't know Jesus, you really need to get to know him. He loves you so much, and and by you coming to him and asking him to forgive you and believing that he's the Son of God, born of a virgin, and he died on the cross to pay the price for your sin, and you accept this and ask Jesus to forgive you, he will, and you will begin eternal life. It doesn't mean that your pains and sorrows will go away, uh, or people won't persecute you, because they persecuted Jesus first. The world hated Jesus, and the world will hate you as well. So there, you don't 
accepting Jesus doesn't mean you're going to be living in paradise the rest of your life. You're going to get a lot of miracles and it's going to be joyous at times that you'll still have sorrows and pains and sickness and so forth. You might be healed and and but life goes on until Jesus actually returns and the dead will rise first and they'll get a body that has no pain, a spirit body, then we which are alive and remain will be caught up with them. We call that the rapture, rapture, and that's when we'll get our spiritual body. Then that's when the pain is no longer going to be there and, or the persecution or any other sorrows uh, and we'll be forever in a perfect spirit body. So if you don't know Jesus, turn to him and say, Jesus, I believe you're the Son of God. Forgive me of my sins and come into my life. Simple prayer gets you saved because you don't, you can't earn salvation. You can't earn to be forgiven of your sin. You just have to ask for it. It's given freely. And once you ask for it, then Jesus forgives your sin and God imputes Jesus' righteousness into you. Now ring the, read the Bible. Start with the book of John. I prefer you to read the King James Version. There's a uh, controversy over modern version. And then uh, there's more to this. Uh, you can ask Jesus to baptize you in the Holy Spirit. You have the initial evidence of speaking a language you haven't learned. And this will help you uh, with issues because when we pray with our understanding, it's, it's kind of give me, give me, I want this, I want that, I want the other thing. Fix this, fix that. Why, when you pray in tongue, the Holy Spirit is praying for you for the stuff that really needs to be prayed for. And there's gifts of healing still. If you've got a sickness someplace in your body, go ahead, touch that place. Got your hand on that place right now? In the name of Jesus, be healed. Now tune in every week the same time you're watching here, and I'll be on. Uh, and go to my website, help me out. Push the GoFundMe button or the Donate button. And give a little, give a lot. I really appreciate that. See you next time.